What's up everybody, Set It Off here, and we are back with another video. So this is our last video of the tour. We're actually going home literally tomorrow, hence the suitcases and stuff. So what we did was we took to the lines of the shows and we asked you, what are the questions you want to know from us the most? We had some really fun ones, some serious ones, and uh, we gave you our best answers, so let's get to it. What's your favorite food to eat on tour, and what is your shoe size? Because I ask every band that. My favorite food to eat on tour, I'm going to say two things. Uh, first off is Nando's. It's always a gem when you find it. I always get the mushroom halloumi wrap with the whole peri-peri fries. It's the move. Second, I look, go on possiblefoods.com and get Impossible Burgers. They're just basically the vegetarian alternative to some hamburger patties. Your boy still loves, loves a burger and fries, so I like to find a way to make that happen. Um, my shoe size is anywhere from a 10 to 11, uh, you know, because like Nike and Adidas have different sizes, and um, recently just started wearing Timberlands, and I really had to downsize for those because they were so big, but uh, yeah, I would say between 10 and 11. All right, favorite food to eat on tour. It's no secret, I love Chipotle. I think the sofritas at Chipotle are uh, some of the best use of tofu that I have ever seen in my entire life. And Chipotle, if you're listening, I'm such a big fan. I eat there every day. Can I just have the burrito card? The free burrito thing? I'm your biggest fan. It takes a second. It's fine. And my shoe size is a 10, and speaking of which, look how, look how cool these shoes are. All right. Okay. That took a lot of effort. The food one is, it's vast, because I know we're all going to have, like, our own answers, but I, if I had to pick one right now, it's in Chicago, it's called Portillo's. And um, it is the best greasy food spot I've ever been to. So if you wanna know, if you're in the air and you wanna go and get what I get, this is what I order every time. I get the Italian beef dip sandwich, so it's dipped in like an au jus, with hot peppers and cheese sauce on it. And then if I'm feeling really hungry, then I'll get the chocolate eclair cake or the chocolate cake shake. I'm totally not to be healthy, but it's really good. Um, shoe size, I, I range based on the shoe, but it's usually 10, 10 and a half or 11. One of those three sizes. So my favorite food to eat on tour is a tie between Chipotle and Jimmy John's for a couple of reasons. One, because they're very fast and efficient. You can get in there and get get your food and eat there or get out and go back to the bandwagon and eat with your friends. That's what I like to do. Oh, also my shoe size. It's, it's 10 and a half and 11, which is... Also my shoe size, which is like 10 and a half or 11, which is really weird because that's exactly Cody and Dan's too. What is your best dad joke? Yes! This was always one of my favorites, and uh, when I become a dad, I can't wait to use it. So imagine uh, your, your child comes up to you and says, Dad, can I have $30? You go, $20? What do you need $10 for? Kills every time. It's great. I'm pretty sure I even told these people this at the show that day. So a while ago, my parents would play at Hershey Park in their band every year uh, for a week. And so they would get, open a segment for me to play my own segment, which they wanted to call Comedy and Clarinet. So I wasn't just playing a clarinet song. I had to tell the joke on stage. It was completely awkward for me. But they, they fed me a joke to tell, and it's totally a dad joke, and I'll tell it now. There's this boy on his front lawn trying to sell this lawnmower and all he wants is a bike. And a priest rides by and sees a lawnmower and he needs a lawnmower. So he says, hey man, how much are you selling that lawnmower for? And he goes, well, if we would trade it, I'll just do an even trade. So they did. So the boy gets his bike and he's riding it around. Next day, the priest comes back with the lawnmower. He goes, hey man, you sold me a broken lawnmower. This is not working. And he says, oh, it works. You, you just have to do it right. And he goes, what are you talking about? He goes, you have to cuss at it. And he goes, son, I'm a priest. I haven't cussed in 15 years. And he goes, keep pulling that rope and it'll come back to you. And that's my dad joke. <laughs> how did you guys meet each other? Like, where did you guys meet? And how did you form set it off? Wikipedia.org. I don't, it's right there. It's online. Just look it up. These are, these are supposed to be good questions. Um, so let's start with Zach. I met Zach standing in the drive-thru where cars should be at a Checkers after a show. We played a show together that night, but that's where we met. The way we bonded was at Denny's, multiple Denny's trips where we would just laugh our asses off quoting like Family Guy and Robot Chicken and South Park and it was just, you know, that's how we really became close friends. And then um, Dan I knew in high school. We, were, we met in marching band. He played uh, like brass instruments. I played woodwind instruments. Uh, we were in a local band together at that time and we kept in touch obviously. He's been like one of my good friends for we found out it's been 15 years now which is crazy. I joined a little bit later. Um, I actually auditioned for the band. Um, I was not the first person to audition but we I came in, um, had a great connection with everyone 
And about a week later, they called me up and said, hey, we're shooting a music video, we need a drummer. Can you come down? I said, yes, definitely. I walked down, and uh, it's, it had been the first time I'd seen them since then, and I said, hey, how did the other auditions go? And Zach said, oh, it went great. There was this other guy that was awesome, and I think we're gonna go with him. And then they just stood there in silence, and then they're like, oh, no, we're just kidding. But for a second, I was like, you guys made me come all the way out here to shoot this video, and you're going with someone else, cold-blooded. And uh, the rest is history. Here I am today, all these years later. I don't know where that other guy is, but that's for another day. I don't know what I'm talking about. So that's how we all individually met. I went to college for uh, classical clarinet at Oberlin Music Conservatory. I still loved playing, but I didn't love the, the, the grind that it took and what the result was after that. So uh, All Time Low was very kind and gracious enough to allow me to sing on stage with them for, uh, for a song called Coffee Shop Soundtrack. Um, it was sold out in Cleveland, Ohio at House of Blues. Uh, I was immediately taken, taken back by my, my overall love for, for being on that stage with that sort of feeling, and I knew I had to do this. So we all got together, we formed Set It Off, and here we are today. Oh, uh, which music video was the most fun to make? I'll be the first to say that my favorite music video to make was something new. Um, I had never been in a Zorb before. The bouncy castle was cool. Um, to be honest with you, music videos, uh, while, while they are fun, and it's really cool to have the finished product, they're exhausting to do. I have never had a music video where at the end of it, I was like, man, I got a bunch of energy. I'm ready to do a bunch of other stuff. I usually sleep for like three days afterwards because they're very stressful and very time consuming. But um, again, worth it, very fun. For me, it was probably Life Afraid because we got to see a lot of like old people dance around and we did it with this guy named Matt Alonzo and, and he's really fun. There's not a lot of stress on the artist and he really makes sure that you're in and out of there and the shots are great and he does a really good job of just being like, streamlined, here we go, guitar player, get up in there. He calls me guitar player. He doesn't know my name, but that's okay. The most fun one to make or to be a part of was something new because all we did was have fun. We rented a bouncy house and played music in it, which was actually, that was probably the least fun part because we were in Florida and it was sweaty and rainy. But the most fun part was, I think my favorite part, because I'm a thrill ride lover, was sitting next to Dan, who was not a thrill ride lover, doing that, that epic slingshot. Um, you got, if you haven't seen it, you have to see it. Which song are you guys the most proud of? I probably would say Why Worry is the song that we've written that um, I'm the most proud of because the process of getting that song to come together was just a chaotic process and it shouldn't have even happened. But the way that it ended up coming is something beautiful and I mean people still sing the song. I think it's almost been almost four years since that song's been out so it still holds its weight and uh, holds a special place for all of us. I think the one that would mean the most to me would be the song I wrote about my father after he passed. It was the hardest song I've ever had to write because it was never good enough. It was the one, so like, one song where I really needed other people to like step in and be like, it's, 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 it's fine here and help, just help me move along with it because I would have never finished it. That one was the hardest to get through and has the lyrics that mean the most to me for obvious reasons. The song is as a whole that I'm the most proud of is a song that I feel like he would actually really love. It's a song called Diamond Girl. It has a lot of the influences of the music he had me listen to growing up and I just love how it came out. I love the, the chorus melody. I love the lyrics in it. I think it's just a complete song. I think it's one of the best songs we have. For me, I think it would be Wolf in Sheep's Clothing. Not only is it one of our most popular songs, and I think it connected with a lot of people, I love it because it's this piece of art that I have seen people take and then make their own artwork, their own music videos. All these other things and all these other mediums have come from this one song. And it's really, really cool to see our fan base so creative and so talented. And that's why I love it. And, and to this day, people are still making music videos and things like that. And I love to see it every single time. And it's a great song. Zach, why the fuck are you so short? <laughs> oh! I'm actually very tall, and everybody asks me this all the time, but this is little baby Shane, and you're, you're fake tall. You're standing on a ladder in this video. So don't come at me, fake tall person. I'm a real tall person. Real tall people unite. <laughs> What's your guys' favorite video games? I will go on record as saying my personal favorite and the greatest video game of all time is Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door for GameCube. You can disagree with me, but you are wrong, because it's the best game ever made. There's someone, there's someone singing outside. They agree with me. They're singing about how good the, the, the game is. Seriously though, check it out. It's really underrated, not a lot of people have played it, and it's so good. Right now I'm playing a lot of sports games, playing a lot of 2K18, I would have to say that's my favorite right now. The first time I feel like a sports game has integrated the kind of open world Grand Theft Auto kind of idea, like you have to go to a barbershop, you have to go to your apartment, you have to go see your manager, you have to practice, lift weights. I always make the joke that 
musicians want to be athletes and athletes want to be musicians. So uh, that's like I get to live in my little sports fantasy world with that. Ooh, you asked me my favorite question. I love video games. I don't get to play a ton when I'm at home, but I just got the PlayStation VR, which is virtual reality, and now I do play way more often uh, because it's a lot of fun. I'm obsessed with VR. It's an un unworldly experience. You're, you're, you escape everything. You're there. It's really, really neat. I played Resident Evil 7 in VR, and that is the most scared I've been in, probably in my life. I, I know that's kind of a hyperbole, but like I, I really mean that. I was running away from some guy, and I thought I got away from him, and I turn around, and he's right there, and you just gotta experience it. It's terrifying. As far as regular games, though, I'm a big Madden fan. I, I, I like first-person shooters. I just got uh, Battlefield 1. I'm kind of late on that one, but I'm excited to play it. And I'm playing a lot of this game called Just Cause 3, or it's called, I think it's just called Just Cause, because you can do whatever you want. It's like Garrett that thought I'll turn on all the cheat codes and go run around and have fun. I, I really like that game as well. For me, I think it's probably going to be Madden. I really like the competitiveness of the those games because Cody's really good at a lot of things, but I'm way better at Madden, so. All right, my question is, is what do you think the hardest part of getting an album fully written and ready to go is? I think uh, the hardest part about putting out an album is convincing Cody and Dan to write the fucking album. Personally, I think the hardest part about getting an album ready is getting out of your own way. You know, it's, all, it's always a challenge. You want to do something new, but you also want to do something that, you know, stays true to what you are, that you're enjoying doing. It's, it's really easy to get, get caught up in your brain. It's just nice to have somebody from an outside perspective, you know, kind of calm you down and tell you everything's okay and tell you, like, you know, what you're putting in the right work and stuff like that. So, and I think we're really good at that. We all balance each other out really well. That is a really good question. Surprisingly enough, I'm not going to say anything musical. I think... That's the most fun part, is just getting together with friends and, and, and writing music that you love and then watching it come to life. And if you have a good producer, actually putting it together isn't a tough, isn't a hard part. The hardest part is what happens once you're done recording, I think, is when it ha all has to be put onto the CD, find out the album artwork, find out the theme for the record, what does it mean to you, and how are you going to make it unique, more unique than anyone else has released that year so that you actually stand out. And that is a real, real thing that you have to focus on. Maybe not a musical thing, but I just, I find the musical aspect of it all just total fun so I think the actual process of arranging your release is way more difficult because there's so many deadlines you have to hit it's it's a lot it's a lot at once but um, it's still a great process to finally see this thing you created from nothing your canvas was silence and now you have a physical thing that you all made it's it's really dope so for me I think it's being patient and doing it right because um, it's important that's that's it Man, I got heartburn, dude. Anybody got any Prednisone? Not Prednisone. Uh, there you have it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Those are our answers. Thank you to everyone who came out to the shows and the people that submitted their questions. We really appreciate it. We will see you all very, very soon, hopefully on the road. But now it's time to go home and put together a record. We'll see you all very soon. Take care. Shout out to Brielle. Shit! <laughs> Fuck Thanks. shit! Thanks, Brielle. Shit! Fuck! Shit! Fuck! Brielle, thank you. <laughs> like, <laughs> comment, and subscribe. <laughs>